<clears throat> Hello, and welcome back to the Crew Tastic Science Show. We're ranked number one in science shows. My name is Jamie, and this is Shubra Tuari. As promised, this episode will be discussing the fascinating and controversial topic of xenotransplantation. Wow, that was a large word. I'll say it one more time. Xenotransplantation. Hmm. Please join us on this wild roller coaster of fully understanding this complex procedure and all of its consequences and solutions in modern science. Wait, 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 wait. Are we actually going on a roller coaster? Well, we have no idea how to film on a roller coaster, and we have no roller coasters in our backyard, so we can try making it look like we're on one. Okay. Woo! So, we shall first answer some questions regarding the most basic aspects of xenotransplantation mm -hmm. to give our lovely and curious audience at home a background on this topic. Yeah. Speaking of questions, Shura, mm -hmm. I have a couple. Uh, preguntas, I believe, in Spanish. Oh, yes. Yes. What exactly is xenotransplantation? Well, Jamie, I'm so glad you asked. Oh, I, I am. Oh, good. Xenotransplantation is a scientific practice that is growing within the medical and research fields. This involves transplanting, infusing, or implanting animal cells, tissues, body fluids, or organs into a human recipient. The transplanted part must be living, and come from or into contact with parts of an animal in order for the procedure to be considered xenotransplantation. Whoa! And Jamie, what is xenotransplantation used for? <laughs> Excellent question, Schubert. Thank you. I've been hoping you'd ask that all day long. Oh, uh, well? Well, this medical procedure is used to save humans, like us, we are human, whose own cells, tissues, body fluids, or organs are non-functioning. Unfortunate, I know. Neurodegenerative diseases and disorders can also be fixed by implementing this strategy. For example, skin grafts, cornea, and bone transplants can all take place within the realm of xenotransplantation. Additionally, the destroyed cells in patients with diabetes, Alzheimer's, or uh, Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease can be replaced with living animal cells and tissues. Ah! That's right, Jamie. Mm -hmm. The demand for this procedure is extreme today. Up to 10 patients die each day in the United States Sounds while cool. still waiting on lists for human organ transplants, which is why xenotransplantation may be able to fulfill the demand. Hey, we're going up! Just in, Shubra! <gasps> What is it, Jamie? <sighs> Breaking news. Our mutual friend, Emma, <gasps> has kidney, heart, liver, and every other kind of failure. Oh! Uh, she needs Xeno transplantation. No! I know. It's a tragedy of the worst kind. And the organ donor list is too long it's to save her life. too long. What are we do? And, oh, uh, I have more bad news. What is it? What can it possibly be? We're going down. <laughs> My organs are failing. What am I to do? There's got to be a better way. Why, yes, there is. You need xenotransplantation. So, Jamie, how did this crazy journey we call life get started? Well, Shubra. I can't answer that question. Oh. But I sure can tell you more about xenotransplantation. That'll do. Once upon a time, 100 years ago, doctors decided to give xenotransplantation a shot. How nice of them. I know, right? Anyways, it was early in the 1900s, and the experiments just did not succeed. It was real unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So scientists abandoned further experiments so they could figure out why. I remember that. Do you? Yes, I was there. Oh, no way. And they were failing because they were using a variety of different animals to replace human organs, but they were not the right animals. Why is that, Shubra? Well, Jamie, there's this thing called immune system no. rejection. Yep. Tell me more. Well, in order to understand this, we need to get our first-hand sources in check. Hmm. Up, up, and away! <laughs> ah! <laughs> there are three main types of immune system rejection. The first is hyperacute. 
Jamie, tell us about hyperacute. Well, Shubra, hyperacute occurs pretty quickly. Oh, really? Yeah, so quick. Surgery is not even completed. That's how that quick. That is pretty quick. Pretty, not gonna lie. Yeah, pretty quick. The second is acute. Shubra, tell me about acute rejection, please. Acute rejection occurs weeks or months after the surgery is completed. How long after? Weeks or months how? after the surgery is completed. Thank you for the clarification. The third is chronic. Jamie, tell us about chronic. Chronic. Well, chronic usually takes time to develop, usually over gradually years, several years. Thank you, Jamie. Wow, Shubra, that's quite an amazing story. How did it end? Oh, Jamie, how could you not know? The scientists saved the day by creating immunosuppressive drugs that combated the body's rejection of the organs. This way, scientists of today can treat animals and humans and really make sure xenotransplantation can work its way toward working without immune system rejection. Wow, that's quite a great end to a story. Mm -hmm. Looks like there is hope for our friend Emma after all. Yep. I'm sorry, Sullivan. Your organs just aren't the right size. Sorry, Freckles. But surely we can't be your together. blood type is incompatible with mine. Sorry, Freckles. We can't be together. So, buddy, I hate to have to tell you this, but I need your organs. Our blood type and organs work well together. But don't worry. I would never eat you. Jamie, get away from the animals! Xenotransplantation and the idea of killing pigs solely for their organs constantly comes into question ethically. However, ideally the pigs used for this procedure are those that would be used for food anyway, so they serve a variety of purposes. Another significant reason that xenotransplantation is being questioned is the significant backlash that occurs in the human body when an animal substance enters it. The foreign part brings along a bunch of infectious agents like viruses and bacteria. Mm -hmm. In most human recipients, as we discussed, the immune system fights the foreign bodies, attacking and attempting to kill them. Mm. This destroys the purpose of the procedure, quite unfortunate, and also can have fatal consequences for the human recipient. Hello, is xenotransplantation going to kill me or not? We're not sure yet, just stay put. Yeah. Well, Shubra, there are some cons to xenotransplantation. You see, xenotransplantation is in high demand, meaning lots of people want these organs, but there's not many of them. Bummer. Also, there's that thing called a rejection that we just went over, which is also unfortunate because it doesn't last very long yet. But what are some of the pros to xenotransplantation, Shubra? Well, Jamie, I'm glad you asked. So, there are drugs scientists are creating to combat the body's rejection, as well as coatings to hide the transplanted cells so that the body doesn't see them as foreign agents, therefore preventing the rejection. Also, the demand could be a good thing because that means there will be more research dedicated to xenotransplantation and improving it in the future. We're trying to save Emma's life here! Are you two even doctors? Welcome back. It was a nice break to hear about the weather. So, Shubra, how are we feeling about xenotransplantation? Well, Jamie, I think we've done enough research and exploration on the topic to make our official conclusion. Would you like to take that, Jamie? I would like to say that. I think we really do need to investigate xenotransplantation farther. It has been proven. It is proven scientifically. Is it really? Yes, it has. That's amazing. Look at all the research we did. Oh, right. To really help people, and it has so much potential that it's just something, it's something we just can't pass up. Exactly, and there are a few cons to it, but the mm -hmm. scientific and medical community are working to solve it. And if they fix it, then it will be so important to save so many people's lives. Yeah. Well, next on to the weather. Well, Shubra, learning about xenotransplantation really has been a wild roller coaster ride. Woo! Well, we're done with the whole roller coaster ride thing. Okay. No kidding, Jamie. All of the history, science, and debate behind xenotransplantation really blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, but Shubra, what? Hold on. We still have to perform xenotransplantation on our poor friend Emma here. What? Yeah, right now. Right now. That's quite a task, Jamie. Yes, I know, but 
I have a strong inkling that we can do it. Okay, well then, stay tuned for the next episode of the Crutastic Science Show. DIY Xenotransplantation. The easy five-step process you can do in your very own home. See you next time!